Hi, this is Vishy from the School Continuous Improvement. Um, <clears throat> in this video, I'm going to show you the function of the individual distribution identification of Minitab. Basically, we use this function to determine which distribution uh, the data comes from. The data is shown here as under C1, which you can see here. This is a sample data of about uh, 100, uh, 100 data items. As you can see here, we've got about 100 data items here. So the first thing that we're going to do is check if this data comes from normal distribution. That's uh, that's of primary importance for us. So I'm going to check the Anderson-Darling test, which is the normality distribution test. And I uh, enter my variable. So as you can see here, my p-value is less than 0 0.005, which is obviously less than 0 0.05. So therefore, we, <coughs> we reject the um, we reject the fact that there is any statistical there is no statistical evidence of uh, the data not coming from a normal distribution which means we accept the fact that um, there is a possible statistical evidence that the data does come from a non-normal distribution so obviously um, the fact that the data does not come from a normal distribution means that we have to identify which data distribution does um, does uh, does the data belong to so in order to do that I'm going to click on stat quality tools individual distribution identification right so, um, so I'm going to select my data which is the sample data and uh, well the subgroup size has to be predefined but for for this example I'm going to select my subgroup size as one and I press uh, enter so just keeping it very simple at this point of time so as you can see there are many graphs which have been generated there are about 16 graphs so I'm going to minimize these graphs because this is uh, I can read these graphs but it, it can get a bit confusing and I want to go back to the session window which which you see here and I'll go right up here perfect so uh, I'm going to look at uh, these values here, you know, the p-values here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the Box-Cox transformation. I'm, I'm not going to read the Box-Cox uh, box transformation and the Johnson's transformation because that's not something that we're going to be using now at this point of time. Great. Um, from all the remaining p-values, I'm going to shortlist those p-values which are greater than 0 0.05. So obviously, as you can see here, there are only two um, p-values which are greater than 0 0.05 so the first one is two parameter exponential which is uh, 0 0.177 so I'm going to select this and then the next one which is uh, three parameter y bull and I'm going to select that so there are two p-values here which um, which have been identified as greater than 0 0.05 so obviously they fit um, there is a possibility that the data can come from either two parameter exponential or three parameter variable but then the distribution that has got the higher p value which is greater than 0 0.05 wins the race so in this case the data comes from a three parameter variable distribution so that's how we identify which distribution the data uh, belongs to remember mini tab will show us um, the p-values for about 14 distributions and two transformation functions so that's a total of about 16 functions if you've got any questions on how to identify which distribution the data belongs to you can write into me that's vishy at the rate school of ci dot org i hope you had fun learning this new tool this individual distribution identification tool until next session uh, goodbye